Hello everyone out there. I am Janak Osti from Nepal. Warm welcome to you all on Janak Lecture Series where you can see the number of the video lectures based on the PowerPoint and these are specially designed for the students of the medical school and those who are the aspirant of the different competitive examinations like USMLE and other council examinations. For more updates, please subscribe my YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Janak Lecture. Hit a like on my Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash Janak Lecture. In this lecture, we will be talking about the autosomal dominant disorder. Let's proceed. So before talking about the autosomal dominant disorder, let's see what are the classifications of the genetic disorder. The genetic disorder, it can be classified into two different forms. One is the classical form of the genetic disorder and another one is the non-classical form of the genetic disorder. First of all, talking about the genetic disorder of the classical form, they are of three different types. The first one is the single gene disorder, which we also call as the Mendelian disorder. And the second type of the classical form of the genetic disorder is the chromosomal disorder, which occurs because of the change in the structure number of the chromosome. And the third one is the multifactorial disorder, which is because of the change in the gene or because of the environmental effect. So these are the three different forms of the classical form of genetic disorder. Next one is the non-classical form of the disorder which is also known as mitochondrial disorder. This mitochondrial disorder they are always maternal in origin. It is so because during fertilization process the mitochondria are present in the sperm which are present in the neck region of the sperm they all undergo degeneration except the nucleus of the sperm that only persists and that forms the male pronucleus and that fuses with the female pronucleus to form a zygote and all the mitochondria they are derived from the mother that's why the mitochondrial disorder they are always maternal in origin for example that is liver's optic neuropathy it is the non-classical form of the genetic disorder talking about the single gene disorder which is also known as the mendelian disorder they are based on the two different locations it may be present on the autosomes it may be present on the sex chromosome in the autosomal form it may be dominant or recessive similarly in the sex link form it may be dominant or recessive so depending upon that we can see the four different categories autosomal dominant disorder autosomal recessive disorder X-link dominant disorder and X-link recessive disorder. So, in this lecture, we will be particularly focusing on the autosomal dominant disorder. So, let's see what are the different facts of the autosomal disorder. We will talk about this different facts of the autosomal disorder one by one. First of all, the autosomal disorder, dominant disorder, it is observed equally in male and female provided that the male and female they are heterozygous for the mutant gene the autosomal dominant disorder it does not express in homozygosity in homozygosity it may be expressed but that is very rare cases it is so because the homozygous cases are genetically lethal And the third point is that the autosomal dominant disorder it passes from one generation to next generation without any skip in the generation. That's why the family pedigree it is vertical. And the fourth point is that the transmission of the autosomal dominant disorder may be done by either father or mother. And in this case either mother or father they may transmit the disorder to either of the siblings that may be son or to daughter that's why the disorder may be transmitted from mother to son 
or mother to daughter or father to son or father to daughter so these are the four different points that we have to consider while talking about the autosomal dominant disorder the disorder they are equally observed in male and female who are heterozygous in homozygosity it may be expressed but that is very rare because of the genetically lethal case and it transmit from one generation to next and either father or mother that may transmit the disorder to either son or daughter so these are the four important points to be considered while talking about the autosomal dominant disorder so let's see this in pedigree in this pedigree we can see the affected father and the normal mother so affected father it is he is transmitting the disorder to both of the sibling of either of a sex the disorder is being transmitted to daughter and son and over here we can see the daughter the female she is transmitting the disorder to both the sexes to daughter and son and next point we can see that there is no skipping of the generation the disease is being transmitted from one generation to next generation and <clears throat> the male to male transmission or female to female transmission also do occur in case of the autosomal dominant disorder so this four point it can be observed or analyzed through this pedigree of the autosomal dominant inheritance now let's talk about the genetic risk assessment by considering the different gametes that may fuse during fertilization the first point is that we are considering the genetic risk assessment when the mother is affected heterozygous and father is homozygous normal so we draw the ponate square we over here we can see the affected heterozygous mother where one of the allele it is dominant and other one is normal and in case of the father we can see the normal gametes so when there is the fusion of a gamete we can see the two of the children with the autosomal dominant disorder and two are normal so what we can conclude that there is 50% chances that is two out of four children having the child with the autosomal dominant disorder and 50% of the child that is two out of four have the normal genotype so 50% chances of having the affected child and 50% chances of having the normal child in this cases where the mother is affected heterozygous and father is normal homozygous now let's take the another cases where the mother is affected heterozygous and father is also affected heterozygous so let's draw the ponate square we can see over here the mother having the effect affected heterozygous mother and the father is also affected heterozygous so gametes are heterozygous in case of both mother and father so when the crossing is done over here we can see this different outcomes so what happens is that there is 50% chances of having a child or affected child with autosomal dominant disorder we can see the two out of four children they are having the gametes of the autosomal dominant disorder and 25% of chances that is one out of four children of having the normal child we can see over here out of four one of the child is having the normal genotype and 25% of chances of having a child with homozygous gamete and because of the homozygosity it is lethal in case so it proves a point that we have discussed earlier that the autosomal dominant disorder in the homozygous case it is lethal and next point or next topic of the calculation of the genetic risk assessment in this two cases of the gametes where the mother is affected homozygous and father is normal homozygous 
I told that previously the homozygosity in case of the autosomal dominant disorder that is genetically lethal but they are not genetically lethal in case of the Noonan syndrome. In Noonan syndrome the homozygosity is also viable. So in this case let's draw the Pareto square and calculate the genetic risks. We can see over here the mother having the affected homozygous gamete whereas the father is having the normal homozygous gamete. So when we cross the gamete we can see this different outcome. So what we can conclude that there is 100% chances that is 4 out of 4 children they are suffering from the Noonan syndrome or the autosomal dominant disorder. We can see the gametes over here. All of the four children, they are expressing this dominant gamete, thus suggesting that they are suffering from the Noonan syndrome. There are no number of examples of the autosomal dominant disorder. I have listed few. The first one is the achondroplasia, acrocephalosyndactyly, adult polycystic kidney disorder, Alport syndrome. Upper syndrome, Bohr syndrome, brachydactyly, charcot married to disorder, cleidocranial dysplasia, Cruzan craniofacial dysplasia, craniosynthesis, and diabetes associated with defect in gene for glucokinase, HNF1 alpha, and HNF4 alpha. The other examples are Ehler Danlos syndrome type 4, epidermolysis. Bullosa simplex, familial adenomatous polypsis, type 2a familial hypercholesteremia, golden hair syndrome, heart hand syndrome, hereditary non polypsis, colorectal cancer, hereditary spherocytosis, Huntington disorder, Marfan syndrome, myotonic dystrophy type 1 and type 2. The other examples are neurofibromatosis. Noonan syndrome, type 1 and type 4, osteogenesis imperfecta, PFAS syndrome, pi baldism, retinoblastoma, Trisha Collins syndrome, spinal cerebral ataxia, uncombable hair syndrome, von Willebrand disorder, Warren Block syndrome, Williams. Syndrome. So these are some of the examples of the autosomal dominant disorder. You can make a pause and go through it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was fruitful.